So Gary, at one of our recent eFix live feed events, click the link below to see where the next one's happening and come and join us there, we met up with Gavis. G-Wiz. Gavis. G-Wiz. Well, actually, the good news is they're not overly fussy about the way it's pronounced, but okay. apparently Gavis is the official pronunciation. Who knew? I, I certainly didn't know that before we started making this video. Now, while we were there, we saw one of their new rotary isolators. Now, I know what you're thinking. How can we get excited about a rotary isolator? And you might be right. However, not all rotary isolators are created equal. Oh, right. And this one is from the 70RT HP range okay. from Givis. And it is a beautiful piece of kit. It's got a number of features that make it stand out above the crowd. So we're going to have a little breakdown and a review of this product in this video. I think if we bring the camera in nice and close, let's go through some of those key features in the next part of the video. Absolutely. So we're looking at it now on the bench, Joe, and what I like straight away is that I've got these four fixings with a quarter of a turn in order that I can remove the cover itself, which is a lovely feature to have. Absolutely. Nothing worse is than those long screws that you get on some products where you've got to undo them and it takes half an hour to undo each one. We've got quick access, which is lovely. Another really nice feature about this, obviously, this is an isolator. That means we've got to be able to lock it in the off position. Now, you'll notice a lot of isolators have that kind of ring around the outside, don't they, where you put your padlock through? Yeah. Well, on this one, the locking device is built into the handle. See this grey section here? Okay. So if I just pull that up and have a look down the side there, you can see that there's actually three little holes in the handle there that you can put a padlock in. So that keeps the front of this nice and smooth and makes it easier to clean down. So you mean that three different people can have control over the isolation. So individual padlocks from three people, three keys kept, and obviously therefore we cannot turn it back on until all three padlocks would be removed. Absolutely, so again, you've got that additional option of safety, haven't you? Also like the fact it's clearly identified whether the position is on or off, so they're nice and big and clear. It's yellow and red, Joe, what's that significant for? So that means that this is the emergency version of this isolator. It does also come in a black and grey version, which is used for non-emergency isolation. Now, the obvious question is, well, what's the difference between the two? A very clever thing about the black and grey version, the non-emergency version, is that that can be locked in the on position. So this one here is for emergency use and we mm -hmm. lock it off. Yep. However, the black and grey version can be locked on. That seems a little odd, Joe. Explain why we would want to lock a circuit on. So if you think about maybe a large hotel, there's always the risk that someone might come along and switch that isolator off who shouldn't be doing that. So we're talking about, you know, sort of low level vandalism that's very, okay. very irritating. So in that situation, you might want to have locked in the on position so that nobody can tamper with it. So again, they've thought about the surface of the actual uh, isolator itself, and as you feel it, you can tell that this would be easily cleaned, but if I'm gonna easily clean it, Joe, I'm obviously gonna have to introduce water, so what's its IP rating? So it's interesting tonight, we've got IP66, 67, and 69. Notice there's no IP68 rating there, so let's consider why that's the case. First of all, if this was IP68 rated gas, what could we do with it? Well, this emergency switch would then be submersible, which I don't think its idea is that we perhaps have it in a tank full of water for isolation. Purposes. You don't think this would be good in the bottom of a hot tub, maybe, to isolate the incoming supply? I don't, no. Not me neither, <laughs> absolutely not. So there's no need for it to meet that standard. Can you elaborate on the IP69 for me? Yeah, absolutely. Now, this is one that's becoming a little bit more common nowadays. We don't see this all the time. Uh, but it's, it means that it can withstand high pressure and high temperature right. water jets, which means, uh, obviously, it can be used in, you know, sort of very high-level cleaning facilities where things need to be cleaned down to a very high standard. So that's covered its protection against moisture. What about protection against sunlight and changes in ambient temperature, Joe? Yeah, so this will function within a wide range of temperatures. So as low as minus 20 degrees C and as high as plus 60 degrees C. So that's a very broad operating range, which is good. And it's also UV resistant. Now we've all seen it, haven't we? We've installed plastic things and it sits in a bit of direct sunlight for part of the day. It very soon starts to go brittle. Uh, and can become quite bad news for an electrical enclosure. However, this is UV resistant, which is another great feature. So you talk about its strength there. Has it got an IK rating? It does, it goes up to IK08. Now that's quite a high on the IK rating scale, so it's not gonna get easily damaged. Uh, it's all plastic surround, which is fantastic. It means we can use that in various environments, uh, but it's still very tough, it's very sturdy. If you do want to mount this in an area where mechanical damage is even more likely, and it is likely to get battered about a bit, there is a metal clad version of this available also. So let's continue that story on on the IP rating. So let's open up this enclosure and continue that on. I can see clearly now 
we've got a gasket that is molded into the actual uh, lid itself okay so therefore we haven't got to wrestle with a seal here in order to maintain the IP rating of the enclosure when the cover goes back on and just further to that Gary we all know don't we that when we start fixing this to a surface yeah. we'd normally we'd drill the back out and then we'd put our screws through there but that always introduces that little weak point in terms of IP rating doesn't it where moisture can get in behind so if you do want to rigorously maintain the high-end IP rating of this there are fixings available on the outside of the enclosure which means that we don't have to drill any fixing holes in the back. That's a really nice feature I like that so we've got a fixing here and a fixing there removing yep. the need to actually drill out the back maintaining the IP rating. So the isolators come in two, three and four pole versions Joe. Absolutely and there's also space you'll notice either side here where you can attach auxiliary contacts as well so you can put two additional auxiliary contacts on the side of that. So that means we can have a light audible alarm etc when the isolator has been in a certain position. Absolutely or it could signal to some PLC system yep. so that you know when it's on and when it's off. So within these range of switches, Joe, what's the current range that they can switch from? So you can get these switching devices either from 16 amps all the way up to 160 amps. So you can see there's a lot of different switching values there to match your load. That's a massive range of switching currents that this range of switches can do. But what type of switch is it, Joe? This is an AC22 switch carrier, which means it's capable of switching mixed resistive and inductive loads. And it's also an AC23 switch, which means that it can be used to switch motors and other highly inductive loads. So of course, we're gonna to have to introduce a wiring system into here. And what I like is the amount of room you've given in order to swing your cables around in order to make those terminations. We've all fitted all varieties of isolators over the years, and we find we get a microscopic gap in order to get our cables in, dress round, and come back out again. I think the amount of room they've given you in here is very generous, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. And it's those little touches, isn't it, that just, it makes it easier for the installation. It'll speed your installation up, and it'll be less frustrating as well. And also leads to a better quality job you can leave slack in there for the next electrician who comes to have a look at this so it's a really nice design feature just giving you that bit of room to work within on the theme of wiring joe i've got two lovely holes here in the bottom of the electrical enclosure in order to get my wiring system in absolutely and i've got two options at the top here as well so we've got plenty of options for bringing cables in and again speaking of those nice little touches this even this knockout has had thought given to it we've got a little tiny uh, kind of nib in the middle of there where we can put our uh, arbor for our hole saw or our pilot drill yeah. and that'll guide us and get the 20 or 25 mil hole really nice and neat in that space and also they've left a kind of a little groove in the bottom of the knockout for you to get your screwdriver in and actually lever that knockout out as well so no more boshing around with your side cutters and possibly putting it through your hand instead. And if we're carrying on the theme of nice features, Joe, it actually states against the screw fixings the torque setting required by the electrical contractor in order to get these back to manufacturer's required torque settings. Absolutely, and it's something that's becoming more and more important as the industry develops, isn't it? We've seen for a long time now the torque settings on enclosures where you've got your consumer unit and your distribution yeah. board and your protective devices. So it's nice to see that we are also starting to think about that on just your regular switching equipment as well. So that was really interesting, looking at some of the key features of this G-Wiz emergency, G emergency isolator. All the features in there, stealth like crammed within that switch, are there to make electricians' life easier. Absolutely. Whenever we get a video like this to do, I always look at it and think, oh, I'm not sure how I'm going to talk about this for a long time. But there's just so many little touches, so many little design details that have gone into here. So much thought to make the installation easier, to make the operation easier, to make it easy for the yeah. end user. It's just a fantastic bit of kit and it really highlights the difference, doesn't it, between the better quality end of the market yes. and the lower quality end of the market. And to see more great products like this and interact with the leading brands in the electrical industry, get yourself down to an eFix live feed event. We're traveling all across the UK in 2020. I'm sure there'll be a link in the description where you can go on onto our website and register your interest. If you are an electrician, an apprentice, an adult retraining in the evening, you're welcome to attend these events free of charge. All you have to do is click the link and register your interest. We hope to see you there.